Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Sir John. And welcome, welcome to, to the, the What Circuit Log. So, joining me in front of the camera today is Sir John. And uh, kind of doing the filming for us today is Ian. Thanks, Ian. Right, so today what we're going to do, we're going to give a rough introduction to the Digilent Chipkit Development Boards. So these are a competitor that have been released to the Arduino Open Source Development Boards. So what we're, going to, we're going to run you through the, a quick comparison, just going through the major specification of each. Uh, we're going to give you an idea of what software we used to program these, and we're actually going to show you how to install the software and get everything up and running. And then we're going to give you an idea of what shields or expansion boards are available for the chip kit, as well as libraries, and an idea of what to look for in terms of compatibility. So, going straight into it. So, Jars, do you want to take us through the specification? Okay, so over here we're comparing the Arduino Mega 2560 and the Chipkit Max 32. We'll start off with the clock speed, which the Arduino runs at 16 megahertz and the Chipkit runs at 80 megahertz. Now, this is like the, the processor of your computer. So, for in every instruction you write in the software, with a faster clock speed, such as the Max 32 has, it's going to run faster. So you can do more complicated maths or more complicated functions and it will still, your program will still run quickly. The, in this situation, the chip kit definitely has the advantage, so we're going to give it a point. So the next thing on our list is flash. Now this is like the hard disk on your computer. The more hard disk space you have, the better. Same over here, more flash space you have, better. So the so, Ar Arduino has 256 kilobytes and the chip kit has 512 kilobytes. So this gives you space to actually store the program to your right. So with a large amount of flash you can store more uh, longer program and you can also do things like store um, lookup tables or big amounts of data inside your program. In fact we ran into this uh, earlier didn't we? Yeah. So we had a problem where we wanted the lookup table inside the, so inside the Arduino but it just did not fit. So we, had to, we ended up using a chip kit max. So in this case, again, the chip kit definitely has advantage. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is RAM. Now, as you probably already know, RAM is the same sort of RAM that you have on your computer. The Arduino has 8 kilobytes and the chip kit max has 128 kilobytes. We all know that the more RAM you have, the faster and smoother your computer is going to run. Same in this situation. So again, the chip kit has the advantage over here. So in this case, again, you can store more data, you can process more data, and yeah, generally much easier to write programs for if you're doing larger programs. Okay, so the next thing we have is digital I.O. pins. Now the Arduino has 54 pins and the Chipkit Max has 67 pins. So in this situation, the more pins you have, the more things you can connect to your board in terms of LEDs, resistors, or whatever, any switches that you know might need to connect. So again here, the Arduino, the chip, sorry, the chip kit has the advantage. So we've got analog to digital converter pins. So this is a special, specialized kind of interface pin. And what ADC pins do, these take an analog signal and can convert it into a digital number. And this number you can work with inside your program. So the more of these I have, the more analog signals you can interface to. And in this case, both uh, development boards have 16 ADC pins. So what, uh, tick for both on that I suppose? Yeah, I guess. And the next lot of pins, pulse width modulation pins or PWM pins. Now these do dual functions. So these uh, are used to control analog loads in a rather efficient way. And I think we're going to go into that in a bit more detail yeah, in a later yeah. video. Uh, so things like motors, LEDs, it's very useful to run these off PWM pins. The other thing, these on both development platforms, these are actually used as analog outputs. So with a bit of smoothing, resistor and capacitor, you can actually get an analog voltage out of these pins. So how do these compare? Yeah, so the Arduino has 14 pins and the chip kit has 5 pins, so more is better. So the Arduino gets the advantage in this situation. Now. Having less pins on the chip kit shouldn't be a deal breaker for you if you want to get a chip kit. Mm. There aren't many applications where you're going to need a vast number of, P of PWM pins. And so what's next step? Next step is uh, um, talk about the software. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to run, run through programming the boards. So uh, we've got the two boards here. So first of all, 
show you the Arduino. This is a, an old style Arduino Mega that isn't in production anymore. Do we have um, a new? We do have a new one here, and I'll just show that to you. So this is the Mega Two Five Sixty, and this is the one that we've actually uh, compared on the whiteboard. So I've just uh, and Chipkit Mega. So so Chipkit Max Thirty Two. So you can see the major difference connecting up to the PC. You've got a USB A to uh, I think it's an A-type port on this one, rather large, and a mini USB port on here. Next step, should we get it hooked up to the PC then? Yep. Okay. Now that you know the main differences between the Arduino and the chip kit, you're now ready to connect your chip kit to your computer. So before you do that, you need to download the IDE software from the Digilent website. Now, once you're on the Digilent website, you can select um, chip kit boards. And from there, you select from there you select download to, to download the ID please visit if you go to that link now here you can just select whichever one you need from your web for your operating system so I'm using Windows so I'll select Windows now I've already downloaded it so I'll just click cancel over here before you carry on you also need to download the FTDI virtual COM port driver so if you go to the FTDI chip website and select drivers and then just select VCP drivers and I'm using Windows 7 64 bit so I'll select this one here but you can select whichever one is relevant for you so once you've uh, downloaded the IDE software and the driver you can um, connect your chip kit to your computer using a USB cable and you should see the following come up now if you just click here and click um, skip updating software from Windows update yes and then close. Now you need to go to device manager once you're at device manager you can see that there's a USB serial port in other devices if you just right click and update driver software now if you select browse my computer for driver software and I've already put the location in for where the drivers are on my computer and select next and then it says it, no, so it's done, ready. And now if we go to the MPE IDE software, and if we select tools, board, so I'm using a chipkit Uno right now, so I'll select chipkit Uno, and for serial port, it's already been selected, COM port three. And now just to give it a basic check, we go, if you go to examples, basics, and run the classic blink program, and if we just upload it to the board and see what happens usually does take a bit of a while to upload that's it you're, you're now ready to run any programs that you need from your chip kit so that's all we've got for this episode uh, thanks for joining us and hope you join us again next time what we're going to do is going to go into a bit more detail about the functionality of the chip kit. And we're going to demonstrate it, show some of the code, lots of code snippets up on the website. So hopefully you get started on some of your own projects. So if you have any questions, feedback or any suggestions, please leave us a comment on our website or on our YouTube page. And thanks for all the comments we've had so far. It's been really interesting. A few really interesting suggestions there. And uh, as soon as we get time, we'll get on with them. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Dave. Who am I? <laughs>